Hello, in this video we're going to go over problem 7 from IMC 2022, International Math Competition for University Students. So here is the problem. Let A1 through AK be n by n idempotent complex matrices such that AI AJ is negative AJ AI for all I not equal to J. Prove that at least one of the matrices has rank less than or equal to n over K. And a matrix A is called idempotent if A squared is equal to A. As usual, I'm not going to present the solution without any explanation on how we get to a solution. Rather, my approach is to start with the problem, think about the problem, walk you through the thought process that I had when I saw this problem, and eventually we'll come up with the solution. We want to see what works and what does not work, so that we get something more than just the solution out of this video. And I hope you get a lot more than just the solution. Okay, so the first thing that I did was, let's try a few small cases, so and then see what happens. So if I take uh, two matrices A1 and A2, and these are both n by n matrices, what I know is that A1, A2 is negative A2, A1. And I know that both of these are idempotent, which means A1 squared is A1, A2 squared is A2. And what I'm looking for is rank of A1 is less than or equal to n over 2, or rank of A2 less than or equal to n over 2. So this is what I'm looking for. Okay, so um, the first thing that came to my mind is I need to somehow use this equality that a1, a2 is negative a2, a1. Given that I have a1 squared and a2 squared, it was not very easy to, for me to see that I probably need to consider a1 plus a2 squared because the place where a1, a2, and a2, a1 appear is in a1 plus a2 squared. And if you expand this, you're not going to get a1 a squared plus a2 squared plus 2a1, a2 because multiplication of matrices is not commutative. You're going to get a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a1, a2 plus a2, a1. And this is really nice because a1, a2 plus a2, a2, a1 is in fact zero by the assumption. a1 squared is a1 a2 squared is a2. So this tells us that a1 plus a2 is also idempotent. Okay, so this is item. So far, I believe I am at least in the right track, or at least I got something useful. This was not clear uh, from the beginning, and I did use the assumption that a1, a2 is equal to negative a2, a1. Now at this point, I thought I need to really understand idempotent matrices better. So let's say you have a matrix B, and it is idempotent. So what does it mean? If I were dealing with a ring, idempotent would not mean a whole lot. But here I'm dealing with matrices, which means I have Jordan form, I have diagonalizations potentially, and things of that sort. So I brought it to the same side, I got b times b minus i is equal to zero. Okay, so the first thing that I notice is that the minimal polynomial of this matrix doesn't have any multiple roots. And there's a theorem, a famous theorem, that tells you that b is diagonalizable. Just briefly, the theorem tells you this. The theorem tells you if p of b is equal to 0 for a polynomial p of x and p of x has no multiple roots, then B is diagonalizable. Okay, and of course this P of X is um, a non-zero matrix. Otherwise it would be silly to say P of B is equal to zero. Okay, so P, B is in fact diagonalizable. Now they talked about rank. They, the question was a, a, asked us to show that rank of A is less than or equal to N over 2 or rank of A2 is less than or equal to N over 2. Either rank of A1 is less than or equal to N over 2, or rank of A2 is less than or equal to A over 2. So how can I relate the fact that it's idempotent with rank? So when I look at this B that is idempotent, I know that it can be diagonalized, so I can write it on as P times a bunch of 1s on the diagonal and a bunch of zeros, because the only eigenvalues of this B, we know that B squared minus B is 0, 
So the only eigenvalues are 0 and 1. And that's a pretty easy fact to see. And it's a very acceptable fact. You can use that in a math competition. But if you aren't familiar with that, let me show you why all of the eigenvalues are either 0 or 1. Let's write it down as BV equals lambda V. So I'm assuming that lambda is an eigenvalue. So B squared V would be lambda BV, which is lambda squared V. However, I know B squared is B. So BV is equal to lambda squared V. But BV is lambda V. So lambda V is equal to lambda squared V. And this means lambda squared minus lambda times V is 0. But V is an eigenvector, so V isn't 0, so lambda squared is lambda, which means lambda is either 0 or 1. So all of the eigenvalues of this matrix B are 0 or 1, which means, in fact, if you look at the rank of this matrix B, rank of B is the number of non-zero uh, eigenvalues. Okay, so now let's summarize what we got. We got A1 is idempotent, A2 is idempotent, A1 plus A2 is also idempotent. I, I want to show that rank of A1 is less than or equal to N over 2 or rank of A2 is less than or equal to N over 2. So I need to look at the non-zero eigenvalues of A1 and A2 and A1 plus A2. So how many non-zero eigenvalues can A1 and A2 have? Well, there is exactly, if you look at what happened with B, rank of B is exactly the number of ones on the main diagonal of diagonalization. But that is exactly the same as the trace of B. Because if you add, if you look at trace of P11100, P inverse, trace of that is exactly the same as trace of that diagonal matrix. And that's exactly rank of B. So we should be really done. And this, so this solution can be generalized to the uh, case when there are more than two matrices. Okay, so let's actually write it down now. So here's the first claim. The first claim is for every idempotent matrix B, rank of B is the same as trace of B. This seems to be the key point, uh, the key claim in our solution. So we're going to claim that at the beginning and we're going to prove this. Okay, so since B squared is equal to B, B times B minus identity is in fact zero. So that means B is diagonalizable since X times X minus one does not have multiple roots. Okay. So now we're going to diagonalize this. So we have B is equal to P and then a bunch of ones and a bunch of zeros and then times P inverse. Rank of B is the same as rank of this matrix, which is the same as the number of ones on the main diagonal. But if you look at trace of B, trace of B is the same. It's trace of P, ones, zeros, zero here, P inverse. Trace of AB and trace of BA are the same. So you can swap these two for trace. And if you do, then you'll get exactly trace of one, zeros. And that's also the same as the number of ones the number of ones on the main diagonal. Okay, so now that we know this claim and we are done with this claim, we can now solve the problem. Should be easy to solve at this point. 
So if you look at a1 through ak and square that, you will get the sum ai, aj, i and j go from 1 to n. And this would be all different possibilities of i and j. So this can be written as the sum i equals 1 to n. If i and j are the same, you would get ai squared plus sum i less than j, ai, aj plus aj, ai. And this would be the first sum, would be the sum of ai, i equals 1 to n. And the second sum would be the sum of a bunch of zeros, because ai, aj is negative aj, ai. So this means sum of ai, i equals 1 to n squared is equal to sum of ai, i equals 1 to n. Okay, so this means sum of ai is item potent. So by the claim, rank of this matrix, sum of ai, which is from 1 to n, is the same as its trace, trace of sum of ai. But we know trace is additive, so we can take it out. So that's the sum i equals 1 to n, trace of ai. Okay, now. What's the largest possible value for the rank? And this is from 1 to k. The largest possible value for the rank is n, because it's an n by n matrix. So rank of sum of ai is at most n. So these two tell us that sum of trace of ai is less than or equal to n, i equals 1 to k. But if this sum is less than or equal to n, it means one of them must be less than or equal to n over k. Because these are k terms, they add up to something less than or equal to n. They cannot all be more than n over k. One of them had, uh, must be, the minimum of them must be less than or equal to n over k. So thus, there is some j such that trace of aj is less than or equal to n over k. And that is the end of the solution. If you enjoyed this video, I have a lot of similar videos on my channel working on competition problems and topics that are useful in math competitions. If you have any suggestions or problems, feel free to send me an email at mathcompetitioncoach at gmail.com. And I will see you in the next video.